Hi, my name is Brian M. Davis. I am the host of Performing the Arts. Well, this is the, uh, I guess, in the first episode, pilot, whatever you want to call it. And joining me today is my first guest. Hey, everybody. How you doing? My name is Frank Provenzano, and I am the very first guest of this show. And I'm super excited. Thank you for having me, Brian. Of course, Frank. Appreciate it. Uh, first, uh, Tell me about yourself as an artist in terms of uh, just acting in general. Like, sure. How, like, how did it first really start with you? Okay, so how I first got into acting, um, I was 11 years old when I was really, when I really first started acting. But, you know, my whole life, I was always the center of attention. Uh, you know, I always wanted to be the big kid making the funny faces. Everyone, look at me, look at me, look at me. And then I do something like ridiculously funny, like make a funny face or fall. Or I was always into that. And people were always like, you're, you're a clown, you're a clown, you're a clown. And uh, here I am at 25 years old, still a clown. So they got something right. Uh, but yeah, so I was like younger people uh, that were older than me. They were like, you remind me of Jim Carrey. And I was like, who's Jim Carrey? <laughs> and then I watched a couple of his movies and I was like, whoa, I want to be just like that guy, you know? And I went to my parents. I was like, I want to do what that guy does. And my parents are saying, okay, cool. We'll find you an acting class. So with that, um, we found uh, a class. We heard something on the radio about this acting class. So we were like, okay, let's take it. I auditioned for it and i got in the class i didn't know how i got in but the side for that was a mcdonald's french fries commercial and i was like okay uh mcdonald's french fries are the best uh saltiest um and everybody who has who likes them smiles all the time and the teacher was like okay that was nice i'm glad you can read Let's try acting now. Sell me the French fries. Make me want to fly to McDonald's. And I'm like, okay. McDonald's French fries are the best, saltiest thing ever in the whole wide world. <laughs> and she was like, you're in the class. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that helped. I trained in that class and that program. That was great. I trained with some great teachers. I eventually moved to another program, uh, which was like, another year long and that second program was really good and I felt super exceptional there and I was getting compliments by all the teachers they're like you're really good you're a natural at this da, 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 da. you know so I heard that and you know my ego just got bigger and bigger and bigger so and that big ego went took me through high school which is where I was actually formally introduced to theater. And I trained in theater there. And I uh, then continued theater in college. Um, by the time I got into college, my head was this big with ego because <laughs> all I've ever gotten was compliments my whole career and no one's ever given me any notes to adjust other than like some minor things of like, you know, I was happy, now be sad when you do it. Like little things like that. So. I'm thinking like, I am a star already. <laughs> and then I did a scene in college. I was doing some scene work. And when I was like, I was like 18. And the teacher ripped me apart to sh absolute shreds. Just went on this, this big giant list of things that I didn't do. And everything that he listed in this list after I performed the scene so horribly was stuff that I didn't even think about thinking about. Like then, it was at that moment that I realized that I was so far behind because I was riding this giant ego wave. And I was like, oh snap, like I'm not actually that good. These people just were nice to me because I was a little kid. What are you gonna do in my life? <laughs> yeah, the first the first time you get a reality check as an actor is always the hardest because you always had this sensation of, hey, you know, maybe I'm doing this good. And all your teachers are like, Yeah, hey, you're doing good, you're doing good. But the moment you have your first reality check from either yeah. 
or a director who is experienced as both as an actor or as a director or both, it could go, eh, you were good, but you were, in my, in my, in my uh, opinion, you were shitty. You could do better. So, right. And, so, that, and the thing, the thing about it was, so in this class, so this guy, he's, he's, uh, he has a master's in directing from Yale. So like he knows what he's talking about, and I did a scene with him. Uh, so we did. Uh, we have six scenes throughout a semester, and I did the first scene. And the first scene I did with him impressed him, you know. So then again, so I'm. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second scene, and of course I rehearsed. I went over with my partner. We got into costume. We made a set. Like you know, we did. I did everything that I thought was enough, and. He was just like, I've been teaching for 20 years, and that was one of the worst I've ever seen in my whole career. And I was like, ow. <laughs> so, uh, and then he just like, he was like, you have no objective. There was no reason you did this. Like, there was no reason for you to set the table. Like, your costume doesn't really match a character. All Your line reading is way off. You don't even understand this character. You don't know what you're saying. You don't know why you're saying it. You know, and I'm just like, huh, what? I'm supposed to think about all this stuff? What the heck? <laughs> and then, uh, so that moment was a really big turning point in my career of like, oh, okay. Like, I want to do this the rest of my life. I have to take this serious. Um, and then I just started not listening to compliments anymore. You know, of course, I still received them and I was very humble about receiving them, but I really took them all with a grain of salt because compliments don't really matter. The only compliment I want to see is you book the job. That's the only compliment that counts. You know, if you don't book the job, then anything that they say is almost irrelevant. You know, if they call you in again, that's a compliment. If, if they, but if you book the job, that's the compliment. That's the only compliment that any actor should be looking for, you know, unless, they're in a private class and the teacher's like, hey, I've seen some real growth. Like, that's good to hear too. But the real compliments actors want is to book. So I, I started having that mentality from 18 throughout. And then as the years gone have gone by, I've gotten more and more mature with my choices in just my career path and what I do and how I approach things and how I talk to people in the industry and so on and so forth and just how I carry myself. Because if you met me at like 17, 18, you'd be like, oh my goodness, this guy is the cockiest person I've ever met. But you meet me now and you'll say, this guy's the most confident person I've ever met. Oh yeah. I was like on the threshold of it, but I know now that I'm super confident because I know that I'm a good actor because I work hard. Because from that moment, that time I got ripped to shreds, I said, I never want to experience that again, but I am open to it. You know, if, if I'm bad, I want to know that I'm bad because I want to be able to grow. I want to learn. So I want to be ripped again, but I hope it never happens again. And I'm going to work hard to make it not happen again. But if I need to, I, I want to hear it, you know? Yeah. So, I and I did get ripped a few more times in my career, not as bad as that first time, but I did have moments of growth where it was like, you know, where I, I just had to level up, level up, level up, level up. Um, so and now, you, yeah, what's up? I think yeah. that, that's about it. So that's that's yeah. that's basically who I am today. So, you, so getting ripped to shreds, it was essentially a defining moment as an actor. Oh, yeah, 100%. Or have you, or, do you think since then you have actually more defining moments on that as an actor? Because I know I've seen your work not only as, I guess, as a mascot character for Mrs. Maisley's. Because yeah, I'm, yeah, yes. I'm not sure if that's a mascot character or if that's just like an extra character that, or like a pop-up character or something like that. Yeah, that was, that, that, that character is super fun. That was a, uh, that was, that, so that was for, to help promote the marvelous Miss Maisel, and it was like a, a character that I got to create originally. All they said was, "It's a 1950s delivery boy." That was what the audition was. You're a 1950s delivery boy, and I created like who the character was 
out of that. And what I created in the audition was good enough to get me booked. Booking that job was like a very defining moment. You know, I've had, yes, I've had multiple defining moments in my career, but I had, if I had to pick one, it was that first time I got ripped to shreds. Because if that didn't happen, who knows where I would be today. I probably wouldn't be acting today because I'd probably, my head would get too big and then I'd get ripped by someone else and it would just pop, you know? Cause what he did, he helped, he helped deflate my head. I feel like if I let it get any bigger, it would have popped and I wouldn't be here. So that was like the defining moment, but I've had, I have had other moments in my career that I'm just like, yep, this is what I want to do. And one of those was doing that delivery boy gig. Cause that was a two week job. I worked with people for seven days and a lot of people said because of that. So I interacted with people a lot. Uh, people were waiting up to four hours and my job was to entertain people in line and every sing almost every single person, like 98% of the people there were just like, you made my day so much better. You were the reason why I stayed in line. Like you're great. You have a bright future, this and that here that from so many people like really showed me I'm like yep this is the life that I'm meant to live this is the place where I'm supposed to be I'm here to bring joy to people to bring entertainment to people put smiles on their face to help them forget about their problems and that that moment like it, I, I can't wait to have another moment like that I'm looking forward to that next moment yeah, especially once this whole uh, uh, COVID-19 coronavirus thing pans over and it's sort of like, you kind of go back to normal-ish. Yeah. I, I honestly can't wait to see the uh, additions and all that stuff, the theaters packing up, hopefully, you know, sometime soon. Hopefully within the end of the year. Yeah. We could go back to the actual thing. But, yeah, uh, inter going back to college and also high school, where did you go to high school originally? Was it like a performing arts? Uh... So I went to Christ the King Regional High School, which is a nice private Catholic school, uh, which had a very good theater program, which was super funded for some, like, they, they love theater over there, which, which was great. It was a musical theater program. And it was my first two choices. I went, I wanted to go to Frank Sinatra School of Performing Arts. Then I wanted to go to LaGuardia. School of Performing Arts, and my third choice was Christ the King. I auditioned for the first two, and I did not get in. I actually had one of my worst auditions at Frank Sinatra ever, and I still thought I was hot shit. I uh, I'll, I, I could tell that story. Um, so go ahead. It's, the, uh, it's, 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 it's your experience. Real quick, it's it's a pretty <laughs> quick one, but it was just like, but I was like, I'm the man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I uh so I was reading the paper uh you know the sides and we were doing it and like I never actually did an audition like with a reader that was standing next to the director so I was reading and the stage direction said like he hugs her so I I was reading the scene and I stopped mid-scene I was like hey do I hug her like just completely broke character, stepped out of it. I was like, do I, do I hug her? And the director was just like, <laughs> no. I was like, okay. And then just jumped right back into it, you know? And then walked out my mom was like, how'd you do? I was like, crushed it. <laughs> like, you know, and then like, it didn't, I didn't realize till like years later that that was like terrible like terrible terrible horrible um you know but i'm like eh, it was years ago it's fine but then like all those bad moments that i didn't realize that were bad like came back in that moment when i got ripped to shreds when i was 18 <laughs> so i was like oh gosh i shouldn't have asked a hug <laughs> so it's it's odd how you mentioned uh, laguardia because a lot of times that i've especially as an actor and going to community college a lot of my friends who weren't like, say, theater, but they had like actor friends say, oh, you know, my friend went to go to LaGuardia or something like that. Right. Uh, do you think, and this is actually a good question, because uh, do you think private schools slash universities slash conservatories slash, I guess, acting studios have much more an advantage 
compared to say public schools, which is like, you know, community colleges, colleges of like city, you know, city university of New York or. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, here's what I think. I think it depends what the advantage is with conservatories or like high end schools like the difference between me, someone who went to the City College of New York and has a degree in theater versus someone who went to Juilliard, the only difference that they have an advantage is, well, not the only, but the biggest difference is the connections that they can make. If someone says, I went to Juilliard to an agent, they're going to look more toward them because Juilliard. You know, and if I'm like, I went to a city college, they're like, yeah, but that's not Juilliard's son. Like, you know, so there's just that. And, you know, it, Juilliard has like a lot more opportunities to meet people because it's Juilliard or because it's NYU. And someone that just went to like a public school or just some regular acting training somewhere else isn't going to have the same opportunities to meet uh the same people that the Juilliard people meet, you know. Now I could meet people, and I have met people that have gone on to those showcases just because of grinding. Because the other answer to that is, it doesn't matter where you went; it, it matters what kind of person you are. Because I, you know, because I'm the same age as someone who's graduated from Juilliard the same year that I. I grad, you know, let's just say we're in the same. And I bet that there's someone that I that went to Juilliard that I've booked way more work than just because my grit and my hunger to succeed probably exceeds that actors that went to Juilliard. So it's all about like if if you've got it in you, because you can have the connections and you can make it, but you know, if you just don't want it that bad, it's gonna, it's gonna show. And if you just are not comfortable with who you are as a person, if you're not unapologetically yourself, it, you're not gonna get that far. So sure, the only advantage that I really see or disadvantage is the ability to meet more people that can move your career further. They, you know, the people that go to the top notch schools do it sooner than the people that don't. But if you are smart, you do your research, you take classes, and you know how to network, it doesn't matter where you went. Because there are actors that have never, ever, ever, ever taken an acting class, and their first gig ever was like a supporting role in a hundred million dollar budget movie. You know, they never went to any big school. They never, they were just in the right place at the right time and they could do enough to make it in. It's, I, I it's think a, there, yeah. yeah. I think there is a networking aspect in terms of, you know, colleges, especially the public colleges, because I've heard friends who went to City College that they, oh, they met Angela Bassett, like, what? <laughs> Yeah, that was the year after I graduated that she, you know. Yeah, and that Ali Sheedy was uh, acting for Canberra Professor, too. And I, yep. and that uh, my, you know, college, Brooklyn College, they had F. Murray Abraham as a, uh, I believe, a BFA acting professor or maybe as an MFA acting professor. But he was an acting professor there for like maybe a couple of semesters. Mm -hmm. And I would read how essentially there are ways to actually still network yourself even if you're going to college from like a public college where there are still opportunities for you to actually still network directly because like you just said before it's not about who you know it's, it's about well it's, it is about who you know but it's about more along the lines of being at the right place right time as opposed right. to just like knowing the right people and hoping to um get get your foot in the door that way. And, right. some of, uh, and some of the places that I've been to essentially have had that mentality of knowing who the right people, all that stuff. But there are people who were at the right place at the right time who were able to actually essentially almost springboard their career. Right. And yeah, of course it exists because, you know, 
you get top notch training. You know, that's that, that that's a thing. Like the, the the other difference between you know where you go is you know certain schools do, like you know Juilliard has more intense training than you would at a public college. You get to you know you go a bit more in depth with it, but you. But that doesn't mean that every if you went to Juilliard, you're automatically a better actor. You know, because uh, I mean, if we're talking about like who's a better actor, it, it's hard to compare, you know, better or not better. But I like to say like someone has a better understanding of breaking down a script and a better understanding of storytelling. That's the way I like to say say it more you know but it's hard to say like an actor is better than another um but that you know I, like i said you know there's not every actor that walks into every program is going to walk out amazing it's just that's just the way it is some people just don't have what it takes or don't want it bad enough it doesn't matter where you go you're going to find that anywhere the only difference is you know <laughs> you they have more money <laughs> It doesn't matter how much money you have or what program you're in. There's still going to be people that don't care that much. Or if they do care, they're not going to care for that much longer, you know, because then they're going to go out in the real world and then they're going to get chewed up like dogs. And they realize they're like, oh, I can't really handle this life. I'm just going to go to Wall Street, <laughs> you know, just whatever. Like it, it happens. People drop like flies. People oh. decide that this career is not for them. And, exactly. and there's just some people that just don't have what it takes point blank period you know but it's it and it's not a bad thing like everybody has a purpose in life and everybody thinks that you know their purpose is you know a lot of actors think that their purpose is acting and maybe it's not and it, this could be true for even you or i and we just haven't figured that out yet i highly doubt that i'm going to do something that's not acting but you know i you never know it, you know, anything is possible. And, and like, you know, and I don't want it to sound like I'm knocking any of these schools because they're prestigious schools for a reason and the training no. is great for a reason. But we just have to look at the facts here. Does not everybody that attends every top notch school is going to be a top notch actor? That's just how it is. Some people are just there just to have the name be like, oh, you know, not paying attention this here, there. I went to Juilliard. But, and there's going to be other people that go, take it super seriously. They eat acting for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then they are successful because of it. It's, it's odd how you mentioned uh, people being almost like discouraged from acting, that sort of thing. I remember I took a break from community college for a while because of some personal problems. And when I returned, I actually transferred out and I went to BMCC in the uh, little man and Rebecca. Mm -hmm. And when I was a transfer student, I was putting in all my transfers and I wanted to continue on as a theater student. And I went to meet with the guy, not the guidance counselor, the, the advisor there. It wasn't the theater advisor, it was just the regular advisor because I didn't have my theater advisor. And he point blanked looked at me and goes, do you really want to be an actor? You know, you could just get you a liberal arts degree and you'd be out in like maybe a year and a half. If, if you were an actor, you're stuck here for an extra two years. And I, I, and I looked at him, point blank, and went, I want to be an actor. This is something I've been building in for the past, like, who knows how long. And there are moments where people are being discouraged from acting, even though they are, like what you said before, you know, they don't have enough confidence in themselves to actually continue on doing that. So they just don't go and do, you know, they just become like a, some engineer somewhere or something like that. It's like, they don't believe in themselves, even though they were a good actor. It's just, they didn't have the, the fire in them that could actually keep them going, that sort of thing. So when I heard that guy talk to me, it was, was you know, you still want to be an actor. And then I'm like, I want to be an actor. <laughs> this is like my dream thing. And now here I am, five years later, no, no, six years later, well, close to six, yeah, five and a half years later, I'm a graduate with a BA in theater, you know, and I'm like, yeah, it, it's amazing how even people who aren't in theater are very discouraged about theater because they don't see theater as a very, uh, I mean, 
we can say that yes, theater is a very hit and miss uh, career because people have essentially worked as actors and then they didn't have any work. So they stopped working as an actor and maybe they just started doing, you know, construction somewhere or maybe even became, you know, school safety, something like that. Or maybe even right. like work behind. Anything. So they, they did something that's not acting. <laughs> yeah, they did something they, that know. wasn't. But people who are still actors, they still work in theater and they just start working behind the scenes. So, and that's how people, uh, I think that's how mostly actors who feel assured just like sort of like lean towards is that they don't do any, they, that they go away from acting and do some other career or they do continue on acting. But like you said before, they still, they keep on holding their craft. They keep on leveling up. They keep on grinding and they still continue on helping just by doing something else that is not acting, but is still with relatively in theater. You know, they I, work in the industry somehow. Yeah. You know, doing film, they just start working on the crew. Or they start writing. They start, you know, different. Because I, I've, I've worn many hats in my career. I've been, uh, you know, I've been an actor. Uh, I, I haven't directed any shorts, but I've directed like, uh, you know, skits on Instagram and stuff when I like worked with other people. So I have like an eye for that. I've written sketches. I've, uh, I've been an acting coach. For some newer actors here, I've uh, I've done a lot of crew work, you know, PA work here and there. I'm involved, you know. Yeah. You can't just it, you can't just be like actor. <laughs> you know, it's impossible yeah. to, to just stay in that one lane of acting. You yeah. have to become involved in other places because being involved, a you know, you're just you're a handy person and you're someone that people would want around. And you're able to meet more people that are in your industry that can help introduce you to more people that can help you grow. Exactly. It's about who you know, but it's about who knows you. Acting. Uh, acting. Acting. All right. Uh, in, terms of, <laughs> in terms of acting, was there a certain, and this relates back to your childhood, I guess, uh, like, People mention like, oh, you were like Jim Carrey, that sort of thing. What did you and was there like a certain movie or film? Like, was there a mer bleh, was there the mask? Huh? The mask. That movie. Uh, I was like, yep. I watched that movie a million times, and I was like reenacting every line, you know. And I was all righty then. <laughs> uh, I love that movie, and I was like, "Yes, I want to be just like that." Uh, no, Cuban Pete. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love I love that movie. That movie was like the one that was like, "Yep, want to be just like that." And growing up, you know, I still like I'm like, "Yeah, I'm like Jim Carrey. I'm cartoony, cartoony, cartoony. I'm Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey. I'm the next Jim Carrey." And then I realized, you know, once I was, you know, like a few years ago, I'm like, "Wait a second. I'm not the next Jim Carrey. I'm the first Frank Provenzano. Yes. I must be my own. <clears throat> but he was definitely an inspiration, and he's an inspiration for my a lot of my comedic performances and my stand-up comedy career. Do you have any other inspirations? Uh, Brad Pitt, I think, is a very versatile actor. I like him. Um, I like Johnny Depp. I like his versatility. And I think one of my favorite actors who is the most underrated of them all is Gary Oldman. God, yes. That's my favorite actor. He is incredible. And he is one of the most versatile actors ever. Yeah. And I really like that because I consider myself a character actor. And Gary Oldman is so character actor that you don't even know he's in half the movies that he's in. Yeah. And he He's just, he's just, a, he's just there, and he's like, a, you know, he doesn't care about having his name be up there, like, or promoted. He just does his work, collects his money, helps tell the story. And he's, he's beautiful. He's, you know, he, he, he's incredible, and he really makes some great choices. Yeah, uh, I remember there was a, there's a movie Hannibal, and he plays 
the essentially the main villain and the main villain is essentially the like this very disfigured guy and you wouldn't know it's Gary Oldman because one he's in heavy makeup two he's talking with a very thick sun accent so you expect it to be someone else and then when you find out it's like, oh this was Gary Oldman because it was like holy shit he's an excellent actor he's like he's under heavy makeup he's talking with this very sudden drawl that doesn't sound human out <laughs> it's like that's acting yeah that that is, yeah acting is a wonderful art <laughs> all by itself yeah i love yeah man I, 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 it's incredible and there are so many incredible actors out there and myself as an actor i i just say to myself like yeah i'm gonna work along these guys one alongside these guys one day like i'm gonna make it happen i can do it i think now especially now today i like oh, yeah. really look at myself realistically yes. and i'm like yeah i can hold I, I i can hold my own with these guys you know with the pro pros <laughs> do you have any uh speaking of acting do you have any uh like, I guess in a way, do you have any, uh, what's the word, um, repetitions you do before going on stage or before acting? It's like, this is not what I need to do. I'll just do this. I'll do that. Because, you know, uh, one of my uh, acting professors, Manuel, he, I mean, Manuel, he did a lot of great breathing exercises that actually allow us to open up in terms of actually speaking more articulated you know actually sounding more stuff out do you have any things that you do before you go on stage or before you film is like hey i need a few minutes can, can yeah you know? i do um i'm not going to get into it too much because it's actually very personal to me um oh. I, my my routine but i i look at getting into character very spiritually and what i you know i have i ask for five to ten minutes alone in isolation and i go through a process where i basically create the character i build a character soul and i get to a point where i say okay enter it's time for you to tell your story that's basically what i do the exactness of what i do is for me and me only to know and maybe i will sell it for a million dollars one day when it <laughs> it works but it's a very very spiritual meditation transfer of energy and i allow the character to use my body to tell their story and yeah and i make sure i'm isolated from everyone because that is something between me and the character and this is when frank goes goodbye for two hours and <laughs> this character says hello for like a couple of minutes or maybe even an hour and a half uh but speaking of uh plays and and films like that and i know this from experience it's like once you're done with a production of any sort, you have the uh, the production, I guess, burnt not burnout. The production, like post uh, post show production thing, where it's just like, ah, man, I, it's been like two days. I, I'm already missing the show. It's like, do you? Oh yeah, I mean, I miss the show closing night at curtain call. Yeah, you know, I'm bowing and I'm like, I miss it. You know, uh, but. You know, not every show, to be honest, not every character, because there's a lot of characters that were rough. And I'm like, yeah. Ooh, like, you know, because I'd be drained, drained, Brian, drained. Yeah. <laughs> like, at, 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 at the end of the show. And I'd be, you know, and there was some, like, when the run was over, I've had moments of, like, thank God, like, oh, like, I need a break. <laughs> that's, that's another thing is that a lot of time, and, and I noticed that this is something I do because I am, even though I do audition that sort of thing, and I do when I do get the role, something like that, it drains me to do a character because when I when I, a f the few times I've been on stage, it is not necessarily physically draining, but when I am doing a character study, something like that, it gets to a point where it's just like, hey, I just need to 
give myself maybe a couple of months, maybe even a few months before I go into go into the next role or something like that. Sure. But, but do you have any like advice to people who feel who have that like almost like almost yeah yeah like so you, burnout i mean rest that's you know mental physical rest is the most important thing like and it's a lot harder you know to go from you know if you finish uh like 8 p.m on a friday night and you have a brand new show or set to do at like saturday 8 a.m like you know that sucks and i don't recommend that just for your mental health uh but it, you can do it especially if you're a professional you have to do it so you're going to um but you know, my personal thing is, you know, you have like, I have that moment of getting into character of that very spiritual moment. And then I, at the end, I also have my own spiritual moment of like, okay, you've told your story, be free and roam the spirit again until someone else wants to tell it. You know, I kind of have one of those moments, but, um, and I think this is just something with experience with me. Uh, I'm, I'm able to move forward pretty quickly. And I think you just have to tell yourself like, okay, this is over. Uh, we now move forward with grateful for this experience and understanding the hardships that this character went through and knowing the story that this character told that we were able to tell with our body. And now we just, just have to move on from it because if you stay stuck in the past then it's it, recovery is going to be harder so same thing about acting be in the present and if the character you're, you're done if you're done with it the character's in the past, you yourself are in the present so you just have to acknowledge that and move forward with it you know and it, it may take longer for some people and it may take you know, like 20 minutes for another person who knows, but you just have to accept it, move on and make sure you get rest. And if you have to just like not involve yourself, anything acting at all for a day or two or a week, then if that's what's best for you, then that's what's best for you. You know, everybody has their own timeline of when they want to get back to it. I recommend sooner than later because, you know, you want to work, 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 but that's yeah. me. It, but you do what's best for you. Forget what everybody else thinks. Forget if I say like, you should do it in two days. Like, no, forget me. If two days won't make you happy, then don't do it. If it takes you six months after a character, then so be it. You know? <laughs> I do have a question for you, and and this is and this is why I wanted it. Like this is why I uh, personally created the show, which was because a, as an actor, you have done both college productions and also professional productions. Yes. In your experience, what are the the pros? Well, I wouldn't say pros and cons, but in your experience being both in college productions but also professional productions what is the more yeah okay I, 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 since i just said pros and cons <laughs> it's like sure. one second okay back. what's the difference what, yeah. what is it what, what does it feel like okay yeah. call it here like so i'll give this is like i'll give a nice general answer first and then i'll like <laughs> rip into it <laughs> and then go ahead it, 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 oh yeah yeah yeah. but I, I need to give i need the base first to make people feel good and then uh, um <laughs> you know kill the rabbit come here come here um so college is a lot more comfortable because you're with your friends you're with people that you know you're with people that you've worked with you've acted alongside you've been vulnerable together in class and other productions here and there there that's it's nice to be comfortable. Professional stuff, you're with a bunch of working professionals who do not fuck around at all. And that can be a little uncomfortable. That can make you feel a little uneasy, maybe, compared to all your friends at college, this and that. And that's 
So that's the good and bad. And the bad and good is the same exact thing. You're with your friends, everyone's comfortable. And most of the time, everyone that you go to college with sucks because mm-hmm. they have terrible work ethic. They don't have what it takes. Uh, they don't take it as seriously as you do if you are a serious actor, unless you're the one that slacks, then I hate you. Sorry. Um, no, <laughs> no. Uh, but there, you know, you, it's, you, it's too comfortable sometimes. And the good thing about working professionally is that you're working with professionals yes. that actually, that don't, that, and nobody fucks around. And that's exactly what you want. You want to be able to, work with people who also want to work as hard as you do you know you say like i'm going to take this serious this is a job that uh, that you know that everybody worked hard to get and everybody's going to work hard to maintain i want to be able to keep up with that and there you are keeping up with it along with everybody else keeping up with it and you're like holy shit this is a nice well-oiled machine that's working uh so i think that's the biggest difference you know you're with your college friends and that's comfortable and that's fun but most of the people you go to college with aren't going to make it. And I'll tell you, there's people that I graduated with that haven't booked any jobs. And that's not me shit talking any of them. If any of you guys are listening, you know, (laughs) but I don't think you'd be listening because you gave up and you know, for whatever reason, you're not in it anymore. The point is you're not in the world anymore. And that was obvious to tell when I went to college with some of you. And Brian, you have people that you graduated with that are not going to make it and that are not going to be in the world. I know somebody that after four years of grinding for a theater degree, one week after graduation, got a full-time job as a secretary and is still there five years later. Wow. You know, it's that, it, that's just the way it is. That's the way, you know, and and it's not surprising because this person was not a very hardworking person, didn't really care, you know, and that's what they went to college. And, but my first time working on a professional set when everyone was good and I felt like the worst person in the room, that makes me happiest. I'm like, oh yeah, like this is great because if I'm, because I know that I work hard and if I look like I'm working the least hard out of everybody and I know I work hard, that means like, we're good. If I'm the weakest link in a production, I have a lot of faith in the production because even though I'm the weakest out of everybody, I'm not that weak. You know, so I, I like it. So that's the biggest difference between, you know, pros, uh, professionals and, and, and college. Uh, college is nice. It's fun. It's comfortable. You're able to explore. You're able to be a bit more vulnerable, but professional working productions or a film or theater you're with people that are going to make you grow because as much as you learn in college they i have learned more on some professional sets than i have in four years of college you know being two hours i um i was in this movie um and i'm be honest i don't even know the name uh and there were two experienced actors one you may know but i forgot his last name because he's one of those guys you know his face but you don't know his name uh and this other actor who is chris evans brother uh who <laughs> he has a brother <laughs> i watched them do about six takes of this scene there it was in a diner and i was playing the bus boy and i had to pour one of them water they did about six or seven takes of the scene, which took about 45 minutes. Watching those two act for those 45 minutes taught me so much more than the, four, than the, than the 10 years of training I had prior. You know, not that I didn't learn anything, but the 10 years of training suddenly made way more sense now that I watched them applying the tools that I've learned. You know, because it's one thing to like experience it and know and be like, okay, yeah, I kind of understand it. But to see it in action with two working professionals that are getting paid like six figures for these roles. And they're like, this is why they got the job because they're doing the damn thing. They're doing it. And, but like that experience was like, whoa. 
and just like, and all I did, so I poured a cup of water and the older actor said a line to me and I had to just like smile. And the line was like, this guy is gonna be the next Picasso. And I'm like, hmm. And he was just so good that like he said it. I was like, yeah, that guy looks like he could be the next Picasso. Like he just brought me in without any effort. He was just so in the world that I had no choice but to be in it too. You know, because I was like, eh, you know, uh, I'm a bus boy. Like, you know, I, I created my own little character for fun as an exercise. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to be a bus boy. Da, 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 da. And he just brought me in. He was like, hey, he was like, look at me. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, he just t- commanded my attention and got it. And I was in the world. And I was like, this is acting. <laughs> and I, I was able to talk to him afterwards. And I was just like, thank you. And he was like, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it, right now, what you just said is like that. That's acting too, because you're you're essentially telling a story and a personal story too. Because I literally had a question I had. Now I just remember what it was. But listen to story. Listen to your story. You know, that essentially what acting is in, in general is essentially telling a story and being captivating, being captivated by that story. So right. But my question is, now now that we're living in a more uh, COVID-19 world, especially in terms of both film, TV, yeah. theater, yeah. music videos, uh, podcast, <laughs> talk shows like this, where do you see yourself not only in the future in terms of like acting that's what but where do you see productions being in the future in terms of like will you see more safety precautions like people with wearing on sets like almost like yeah well actually like, like walter white wearing you know his uh has like every single day so funnily enough so today is june 9th for all the viewers and yesterday night, my manager sent me an email that uh, an official SAG-AFTRA release, it was a 30-page pamphlet on the, on the new safety precautions moving forward. And uh, you'll have to pass, like, you know, you have to follow everything on all 30 pages in order to get the green light to produce, to, to create from SAG. Um, so they just released like a 30 page safety precaution thing. And I read a few pages of it and it's so, it's very dense. So I'm going to need more time to read it, but it's very dense and very particular. And even with that, it's still definitely going to take some time to get things moving, but things are moving. Uh, and the number one thing I can say for productions in the near future is that there's going to be the absolute minimum amount of people required. So... Almost like a skeleton crew, right? Yeah. I mean, in, in every job department there is, if there only needs to be one person, there will be one person. That's the thing, and that's really unfortunate for a lot of yeah. people who are looking for work because a lot of people are not going to have work and a lot of actors are not going to be in work as well because there's no more background scenes to a big crowd scenes like that's that's not allowed to be written now so hundreds and hundreds of background actors aren't going to get anything and a lot of people and a lot of actors that are you know trying to make a name for themselves that are in just kind of this weird level of just like starting to audition for like speaking roles I feel like it's going to be a lot harder because the productions are just going to go with people that they know work already. And so I feel like as an actor, you, you know, if you saw this coming that you should have been able to kind of imprint yourself on enough people before this. Now what I'm saying could be wrong uh, and I'm open to being wrong and I hope I'm wrong because I feel like I'm one of those actors that just didn't, that just kind of went under the cut of you know i was i'm in a new i'm in a completely new level now um and i'm at the very bottom of this new level and i just leveled up right before this whole situation happened so it 
personally, it, it hurts for me. Uh, hurts a lot for me being where I am and because I like to grow consistently and I just haven't really been able to grow. I've been able to maintain a little bit. And to be honest, uh, I've lost a little bit. I've rusted a little bit. Um, but I've been trying to keep myself sh as sharp as I can uh, and as prepared as I can for the end, for when this ends and when things come back to normal. But, uh, you know, right now, I just have to be realistic. And the, the fact, I don't know if I'll book another job for a while. And that's just, is what it is. I don't know if I'll be able to audition for something else for a while. And that just is what it is. And I've been expanding my skills to do other non-acting related things. And I hope that I'm able to make enough money where I can just put that back into acting. Uh, that's the plan. Because, you know, there's still classes that I can take online. There's still casting director workshops that I can take. And I've been doing some of that. But it's just not enough to make a real lasting impression on people uh, over Zoom. I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's just a lot harder, in my personal opinion. You know, yeah. I, you know, and I definitely think that uh, I have people that remember who I am. But it's just, you know, meeting in person and seeing me on a Zoom thing is going to, it's like, it, it's different. It's weird. And I feel like, in every Zoom call I've been in, I've been like way more on edge, just said, just in general. Not, you know, not like, oh gosh, yeah. But even like now, talking to you, I still have this feeling of like, oh, must be. Oh. You know, <laughs> but like, yeah, that's just kind of yeah. like just how it is. Um, so the future of it, there will, it will, things will be back to what we once knew as normal. But for the next few years, uh, there is going to be an, there's a new normal in town. <laughs> it's, it's sad, but true. It's like uh, what you just said before. It's uh, there is some sort of a, like uncertainty being on like a Zoom call because a few weeks ago, yeah, a few weeks ago, I was talking to a Broadway actor who was doing a free workshop, and he was with a Zoom on a Zoom call with like maybe 40, 50 other people, and just being on a thing for like 40 different 40 50 different people not only is it exhausting but also it's like it, it's it's what you just said before it's like you're almost on edge because you just don't want to like mess up and you know it's like do something on like you know all of a sudden like like literally fall down on your thing it's like and have your thing unmuted at the same time that sort of thing but right you're, you're more on edge because you want to impress them more because you feel like you know you you're like, oh gosh, like an opportunity here is few and far between now. Like, you know, it, so you want to impress them even more. And it's like, which oh is, gosh, like, oh. which is odd because not only is the Zoom calls happening, in, which is also relates back to what you just said about college, is that, you know, there is a good and bad in the, in the, in the Zoom calls where it's like, oh, you know, it's, it's comfortable. To do Zoom calls, but also you're probably doing it in your own house, so there's a lot more of a level of, I guess, comfortability to these Zoom calls. Was you know, you you could basically be very dressed up, or you could be like dressed up on like above here, and then below you. Is I'm not wearing pants. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, like people is like. And you're right, within the next like maybe a few years or so, like maybe until maybe 2023, 2024, there's gotta be a like much more stricter uh, regulations in terms of what's being filmed here, what's being um, production wise, theater wise, because theater, theater itself has been gutted because of what's been happening with uh, the coronavirus. Yeah, that's, oh, that, that. And my job is like literally, in the heart line of Mill Midtown Manhattan. So I work within theater, you know, I go to theaters, like when I have my job, I would be going to theater to theater to theater to deliver these tickets. 
and seeing shows that I went to now close, it's very heartbreaking because I've waited for yeah. people to pick up their tickets for Beetlejuice, and that's closed. I waited for families to pick up their tickets for Frozen, that's closed. And because of, and because of what's happening, you know, it's got to be even more of a rougher thing because now you probably, theaters probably can't have more than probably 200 to 300 people inside of a uh, place that could easily fit like maybe 2,000, 3,000 people because they don't want people. And so it's just yeah, got to be every two seats, you know, something like that. Like, so it's just got to be very weird to see a music production or some funny play. And then you just hear like me, a scattered applause going, or it's like, or maybe even like random yelling or something like, like random laughing, like all around the place is like, is so instead of an actual packed house where it's just like. Yeah, well, to, to, to argue that point, I've had some shows with like only 30, 40 people and they were one of the best audiences I ever had, you mm-hmm. know? So just because there's a lack of audience doesn't mean that there'll be a lack of heart and love because you have to imagine if only if there can only be 10 percent of the house filled i feel like the 10 percent that fill it up will be the most hardcore theater lovers there oh they're, yeah you know so that's say so you know of course so sure you might not like you know because broadway actors are usually overwhelmed with laughter or applause you know, just because the amount of applause or laughter is just going to sound quieter, I don't think that that'll really change the attitude that much. A, because they're pros and it is what it is. And they've experienced silent before on the funniest joke. Everyone yeah. does. You know, it just happens. So, and I think just hearing anything is enough. Yeah. Because I can imagine all these Broadway actors, I mean, any actor, you and me, like, you know, we, we, we haven't done theater in forever. Like, just hearing someone go, like, after something it's, you like, right, just, just hearing one person clap for you will be enough. Like, that's what, like, we want that. We want the people to cl- clap. We want to hear laughter. We want people to have a good time. We want theater to be alive again. Uh, and, tr- uh, and with that, I only have one more question, and the question is, to do- and I feel like this is almost a, a good question to ask, but to those who are actually watching this and or listening right now, do you have any advice to those listening or watching, especially if they had just graduated, or like me uh, and almost other others who graduated from, not from from just schools in general, or from like some uh, who were just like starting their lives as an actor or as a writer or whatever, who just want to go into the arts field in general, like the performing arts field, uh, field in general, even though right now, as we just said, it's just got to be a very hard time to do that, even though. For sure. But there's definitely something you can do. And that, my friends, is be able to answer the question, who am I? Who am I? Really? You know, you have to look in the mirror and you have to say, who am I really? And once you really figure out who you are, then you'll be able to strive so much farther. Because once you actually hone in on who you are as a person not you as an actor not you know not you as you know whatever job you work but when it's all when you're alone you have nothing to do you're with nobody you're just isolated by yourself who are you who am i if you can answer that question thoroughly and if you know exactly who you are you will be able to move mountains in this industry. Because if you are confident with who you are, regardless of what kind of person you end up discovering about yourself, that makes you uniquely you. And if you are not unique, if you act just like the next person, then there's nothing interesting about you. But there's something interesting about everyone. 
everybody and there's something unique about everybody. So what makes you unique? And once you figure that out about yourself, you will be able to specify where exactly you want to go in acting and everybody you meet will know exactly who you are because if you know who you are, everybody else will know who you are because that's the energy that you will put out into the world. And if you do not know who you are and if you're still discovering yourself and you want to meet with casting directors and agents and all that, they'll be able to tell that you don't have a grip on who you are and they won't be able to specifically pinpoint you anywhere for any characters or have any idea for you. So you want to know who you are. And once you figure that out, I feel like you're acting, not just your acting career, but your life is going to be a lot easier and a lot more comfortable because no matter what you can be yourself and if people like you or hate you, it doesn't matter because you're true to yourself. So find out who am I, who am I? And then once you answer that question, then you can really start your career. And with that, thank you, Frank, for being my first guest on Performing the Arts. That concludes the first episode of Performing the Arts. Hopefully there will be more of these things in the future. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, do you have any uh, social media? Uh, oh, yes, of course. You can follow me on Instagram at Frank Pro Actor. And if you guys have been inspired, you have any questions or anything, please give me a follow on Instagram. I'd give my website, but it's currently under construction. So, well, reconstruction, but it is frankprovenzanoactor.com. Don't look at it until like August. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I'm still, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty rough right now. And I'm, uh, it's like, uh, reconstructing it but yeah but brian dude thank you so much for having me on i hope that i wish you much success with this show and i hope that this is the first of thousands of episodes oh. and i am looking forward to being a guest again one day yeah i'll and with that i bid you all do and i hope you enjoy watching this episode take care everybody until next time